Welcome to the video. Here we meet again. I have a little man down for his afternoon nap. So as always, cross your fingers. He stays asleep for at least most of the video so I can share all of the tips I have for you guys that hopefully will make your breastfeeding journey easier. The tips I'm going to share with you guys today are gems in my book. Oh my gosh, if I had known about these tips before starting breastfeeding, it would have made the start of my breastfeeding journey so much easier. So these things I've learned along the way, the hard way. So hopefully, by me sharing them with you guys, you'll just pick them up from me and you won't have to learn the hard way by making mistakes and making your life a lot harder. Those of you breastfeeding, those of you about to start your breastfeeding journey, hats off to you. I commend you for even trying and for going for it because it is a hard road. I think it's easier for some people, harder for some people, but it has been very hard for me. If you wanna know about my breastfeeding journey, I did a video on that last week, so I'll link that down below. I went through my entire breastfeeding journey Quinn is now four and a half months, almost five months next week. So that whole time I've been exclusively breastfeeding and pumping and it has been a journey as I told you guys in the last video. So if you wanna know what my breastfeeding journey has looked like, go check out that video down below. And let's get into all the things I wish I knew before starting breastfeeding that has made my breastfeeding life now so much easier. And for those of you who are brand new, welcome. I upload one video every week, every Sunday morning, Pacific Standard Time, all about living healthy. And then it's been about IVF and now new motherhood. A little bit of everything kind of thrown into my healthy living lifestyle. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for watching and hopefully this video helps you. Okay, so I made some notes here so I don't forget because I have quite a few things to tell you guys. Of course, I got my collagen coffee iced this time because we're in the afternoon. I will put the link down below to the collagen that I use from First Form. It is delicious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off telling you guys the items that have made my breastfeeding life so much easier and then I'm gonna go into some tips on increasing your milk supply and increasing your milk storage in the freezer. And then right into that, going into tips on pumping, what pump I've used, pumping at work. It's gonna be a lot incorporated into one. So I'm gonna try to keep it like every point simple. It's gonna be a compact video. So here we go. First things first, breastfeeding pillow. So I was using the Boppy the first month and I hated it. It wouldn't stay in place. I just felt like it didn't have great support. And I was getting really frustrated with like leaning over and my paw Share, that boppy pillow was not working for me. And I dealt with it for the first month. And the first month is like literally the hardest month with breastfeeding. So I really wish I had discovered this sooner. But once I got this, the second month, oh my gosh, game changer, you guys. This thing saved my life. This is called My Breast Friend. I will leave a link down below. This thing is amazing, huge difference. One thing that is great about it is it wraps around your waist and clicks in place and it doesn't move. And it hugs your waist like this and it is adjustable. So as you can see, it's adjustable here, but it hugs around you and it actually gives you back support when you're like in your rocking chair or sitting down on a chair or on the couch. It is very supportive. So this is like a really firm foam. And then of course this cover is washable, but it doesn't move. You adjust it to your body, you sit down. And when you put baby on you, because it's so firm and doesn't move around. Oh my gosh, I found myself not bending over hard hardly at all. Quinn was really comfortable. It has these like bumps too. So like it, their head is better supported to your breast. And when I tried this for the first time, I was like, whoa, this is making my life so much easier. So highly recommend. Don't even bother with a boppy in my opinion. Just go for this right away. The second thing is I needed a really good nursing bra. And you guys have heard me talk about this before in previous videos, but the Target nursing bras are so comfortable and so supportive and very soft. They don't have any underwire or anything underneath, which I don't like underwire, but the bras are very supportive and so soft that I sleep in them every night and I still sleep in them every night. Since having Quinn, I have not gone a night without sleeping in one of them. I actually have six of them now. And I just love how supportive and soft they are. When I have that nursing bra on, I don't feel like I'm uncomfortable. And even when I get full, like my boobs almost get engorged because sometimes at work I, I get to that point because I need a pump and like I can't pump yet. I barely feel anything until I take the bra off. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm full. So that's how supportive they are and soft. So I have one on right now. I have one on literally all the time. And there's full coverage. So don't worry, I'm not gonna flash anybody. This is what it looks like. And it's just very soft, very supportive. And then it does unhook 
here like this and it the straps are very adjustable also so i pump in these bras too which i'll get to in a minute but very very comfortable supportive so highly recommend these bras i actually labored in this one and i talked about that in what i packed in my hospital bag i found that laboring in these bras was really comfortable and it's like super full coverage so i didn't feel like exposed or anything third thing and i should have started off with this because i relied on these every single moment of every single day for the first eight weeks into the ninth and tenth week i would kind of use them here and there they're called silverette nursing shields and what they are is a hundred percent silver little covers for your nipples i don't have them right now actually they're in quinn's room and he's sleeping i don't want to go in there so i'm just going to put a picture here of what they look like they're on the pricey side i want to say a pay for a pair it's like sixty dollars because they're a hundred percent silver but another game changer you guys my sister kira who's had two kids already she let me borrow hers but she swore by them and i was like really she's like yeah Brittany, if you wear these you don't have to use any nipple cream your nipples will heal really nicely if you have cracked nipples josh is calling me hang on okay i'm not really sure where i left off but basically my sister was telling me how great these are because i wouldn't have to use any ointments on my nipples if my nipples did crack or whatever these cups would help heal them and she was 100 percent correct i didn't have to use any like nipple butter or cream on my nipples and the first month even after quinn got his tongue tie fixed like my nipples were really sore so your, your nipples have to get used to baby suck and they're adjusting to all of that and so whether or not your baby has a tongue tie or there's any problems you're just going to be sore the first month many women have to rely on creams or whatever and i didn't have to use anything i just used these nipple shields i would use these nipple shields like every single second of every day i would sleep in them whatever outfit i would wear i would just put them underneath my bra they worked great and you barely with with these nursing bras i would wear them all the time because these nursing bras are kind of thick the nipple covers didn't show through them but there are properties in silver that are very healing and that's why I didn't have to use any creams because actually properties in silver are much better than creams and then with cream like you put the cream on and it gets everywhere and then you don't want the baby to like put it in its mouth so very much worth the money they last forever all you have to do is just keep washing them. I just wash them every night and then you can polish them like if they get because I think that they get like um, less shiny over time you can polish them if you want to but yeah they, they last forever and yeah highly highly recommend another item that I used all the time the first month and stop using the second month because Quinn kept kicking it off. It's called a haka and probably a lot of you guys have heard or seen these before. But basically when your baby feeds on one side, you put the haka on the other side and it catches all the letdown because when baby starts to suck on one side, your brain doesn't know what side the baby's sucking on. It just knows that the baby's starting to suck. So it lets down all your milk on both sides. And so in order to not waste any milk, you just put the haka, which is sort of like a very soft silicone suction thing. You attach it to one side and the baby feeds on the other side and it catches all of your letdown which for me the first month I had a lot of letdown I still have letdown but it's not like it was when my body was trying to like regulate how much it should make it my body was making a lot of milk the first couple of weeks so I would get like three ounces on one side uh, when Quinn would feed on the other side so that was a lot of milk I didn't want to waste so I ended up freezing it for future use although come to find out I have high lipase and even in that early milk that went bad so anyways that's a side note but yeah that's free milk that you got without even trying without even pumping that's a great start to build up your freezer supply is to just put a hawk on one side and I don't have my hawk with me because it's in storage now I don't use it anymore once Quinn was long and big enough he just kept kicking kicking it off I was getting to the point where I was more comfortable pumping I didn't need like any more in the freezer so speaking of freezer stash I want to show you guys how I've been freezing my breast milk so I was putting all of my pumped milk in this or like plastic bags but I was finding that when I would take one out of the freezer when I needed some milk I would have to thaw the whole thing out and then I would just waste half of it because thawed breast milk only lasts 24 hours and after 24 hours you have to throw it all away and so I was kind of wasting a lot so I was trying to figure out a way to only pull out of the freezer what I needed and Josh actually found this for me online these are amazing they're called tiny tot innovations and they're like little ice cube trays silicone each cube is an ounce which is really nice so you know how much you're pulling out and so what I would do is after I'd pump at night or after I'd pump at work and got home from work I would just put all the milk in the tray and then pop it in the freezer and freeze it so then whenever I would need milk I would just pop however many ounces I would need and then put the rest back in the freezer so I literally had no waste using these so I have two of them you could buy more and like stack them but what I ended up doing was just buying two to save money because I'm 
kind of on a budget. And um, once a tray was full, I would just take them out and put them in a Ziploc bag and label them with the date. That way I knew like when each bag was frozen and each bag would have a tray. So each bag would have 10 ounces. It's kind of a nice way to keep track of like how much breast milk I would have frozen. And yeah, like I said, there was no waste using this versus bags or this. I just felt like I was wasting a lot of it once I thought it out. Next thing that made my breastfeeding life a whole lot easier was using the Huckleberry app. And it's a really easy app to use to track how much time baby is feeding on one side and then switching to the other. It tracks everything actually. It tracks baby sleep, their meals, their bottles, if you're bottle feeding, all the stuff. So I mainly just use it to track how much time on each boob Quinn's feeding on. But yeah, very, very easy app to use and made my life a whole lot easier. So now I'm gonna give you guys a couple tips that have worked for me to increase my milk supply. As you guys know, those of you who follow on Instagram know that I have struggled with my milk supply from day one. I'm on the smaller side and my physique, like my boobs are really small normally. I mean, they're pretty good size right now because of all the milk, which I am actually enjoying. But because physiologically I'm a smaller person, I can't store a lot of milk. Of course, I've read that I can produce as much milk as a bigger person, but I just can't store it very comfortably. And so after a few hours, I start getting engorged. So for me, my body just works a little bit harder to produce enough milk. I feel like it's a full-time job for me to produce milk every single day, but let me tell you the things that have made my body, I think, produce the amount of milk it should. And I just discovered this late in the game too. I was thinking, oh, I'll just drink a lot of water because I normally drink close to a gallon a day. And I still wasn't really, like remember at the beginning, I was thinking my milk production was struggling and it probably was, I don't know that for sure, but I was thinking it really was struggling. And when I took Quinn to his chiropractor appointment, I was telling the chiropractor that because he was asking me about my milk supply. And I was like, well, I think it's not great. Like, I think he's still hungry and stuff. And he said, well, have you been supplementing with electrolytes? And I was like, no, and he's like, try supplementing with electrolytes in the morning and I bet your milk supply will go up. Sure enough, it did. So of course you guys know I'm sponsored by First Form. I've been using their hydration sticks and their sticks are really nice because it has a ton of electrolytes, not just sodium. So it has magnesium, potassium. So magnesium, potassium are very important for milk production as well as sodium. So sodium, potassium, and magnesium are the three electrolytes that you really wanna supplement with when you're breastfeeding. Very important. Once I started adding electrolytes into my water, I did notice a big difference in my milk supply. So make sure that you're not just drinking water, that you're supplementing with electrolytes. And that goes for like everybody, especially those of you going through IVF who have all of those hormones pumping through, through you, all those artificial medications pumping through you. Make sure you're well hydrated, but also make sure you have electrolytes in your water as well. And then of course, just make sure you're super, super hydrated. I've noticed the days that I'm more on the dehydrated side or I'm not drinking the amount of liquids I should, I do notice a big difference in my supply. Like not only are we going throughout our day and we're sweating and, and for me, I'm working out and I'm walking, like also my body is making more fluid, you know, milk for baby. And so we get dehydrated really easily, a lot faster than normal. And so I've had to really try hard to make sure I drink lots and lots of liquids, lots and lots of water, and then also supplement with electrolytes. So just make sure that you're like over hydrating yourself. Make sure that you're like, you're thinking, oh, I'm probably drinking too much water. That's what you want. Because if you are not hydrated, your milk supply definitely will drop. The next thing with increasing your milk supply is just keeping the rule of supply and demand in mind. So if you are demanding your body to produce a lot of milk, like you're pumping a lot, you're putting baby to you every two hours, your body is going to respond by making more milk. So if for some reason baby's not eating a whole lot or say like you are weaning off breastfeeding, your body is going to drop off the supply because it's noticing that baby is not attached to you as much, that you're not pumping as much. So it's going to drop the milk supply because it's like, oh, I must not need to be producing this much anymore. But if you are pumping a lot, if you're putting baby to you a lot, your body is going to increase milk production. So when I really wanted to increase my milk supply, I would add in a couple extra pump sessions. I would just put Quinn to me, like whenever he was fussy or like even when I was bored and it had only been an hour since he had fed and I was just sitting there watching TV or I was on my phone, I would just put him in my boob because I knew that my body would sense that he was on me again and be like, oh, I need to make more milk. So if you're demanding your body to make more milk, it will make more milk. Add extra pump sessions, 
sessions, attach baby to you more often, and it will make more milk. So to increase my milk supply, also I would add in a pump session before I would go to bed. I still do this because your body makes more milk at night. It's something to do with the hormones and I can't remember, I think it's the prolactin level goes up at night. And so your body naturally will make more milk at night. So I want my body to be, I want my boobs to be totally empty before I go to bed so that they can fill up at night and also to prevent engorgement. But that'll kind of lead me into my next point. This is kind of a breastfeeding tip, but it's more of a tip for you guys to help your baby sleep, not through the night, but sleep more hours in a row is I, a lot, I don't do this every night, but most nights I do what's called a dream feed. And so right before I go to bed, instead of pumping a lot of times, I will put Quinn to me before I go to bed. So around 1030 is the time I go to bed. I won't wake him up. I'll just take him out of the swaddle and put him to my boob and he'll start sucking. And so that's why it's called a dream feed because babies, they have that suck instinct. They don't need to be totally awake to nurse. So I'll just take him out of the swaddle. He's still half asleep. I'll put him to me and he'll start eating. And so he'll drain both sides for me so I don't have to pump and then I'll put him back in his swaddle. And he lasts normally until about four, sometimes three, where, where he needs to wake up to feed again. But the last few nights he's been making it all the way until 536 from 11 o'clock to 536 o'clock. It's been pretty nice without needing to eat. All right, let's get into pumping. This is the pump that I bought and I've been using religiously. This is the only pump I have. This is the Spectra Synergy Gold, I believe is what it's called. I'll also put a link down below. So it's nice because this is really small. It fits really nice in my work bag when I take it to work. I like to just kind of pop off these poses here. The whole thing fits really nice in my bag and I can wrap these up. I love this pump because it is medical grade suction. That's what I I was looking for and the battery lasts forever so it's really easy to charge when you need to charge it but the battery lasts man you guys i'll probably do close to 10 20 minute pumping sessions and i still have battery left so you really don't need to worry about running out of battery for a while so of course this comes with the traditional like flange hands-on cups but i really wanted to be hands-free and i really didn't want to buy a separate pump so what i ended up doing was buying these and it's a really kind of like cheap knockoff version of like a hands-free pump but I bought these for like 30 or $40 on Amazon and they fit really nicely with the pump. So there's a little attachment piece here and you just plug the hose in, it fits really nicely. And then you just put them into your bra and your hands free. You can't walk around really easily with this cause you'll have to carry it. Or maybe you can like put it on a belt or something. But I just wanted to be hands free. I didn't care about like needing to walk around pumping or anything. I just wanted to be seated, hands free, especially at work eating my lunch. So I'll bring these to work. And of course my pump, and this is all I'll bring to work. These fit really nice in my Target nursing bra with this attached and I pump hands free and I can eat my snack or my lunch and pump at the same time and it's fantastic. Washing these just with soap and water works out great. By the way, I'll put all the links down below of everything I'm talking about. While I'm talking about these, I will tell you guys, another tip I picked up is if you keep these in the fridge, you don't have to wash them for 24 hours. So everybody's told me, oh, you need to wash your pump in between uses. Yes, if you're not refrigerating them. So if you pump and put them in the fridge, then you can use them again without washing them, but just keep track of the time because after 24 hours, you will have to wash them even if you keep them in the fridge. But yeah, so it will save you a lot of time and hassle if you just keep them in the fridge and then after 24 hours, you can wash them. So that's what I do at work. I just keep these in a plastic bag and I put them in our work fridge and it's a grocery bag so people don't know what's inside the bag. That would be kind of weird. People knew like I'm just keeping my breast pump parts in the fridge and just put, I just put them in the fridge in a grocery bag and then I'll just pull them out of the fridge and use them so I don't have to wash them every single time I pump. Okay, and the last thing I'll tell you guys, and I cannot emphasize this enough, is make sure you have lactation support. I could not have breastfed without my lactation nurse's support. I had a great lactation nurse in the hospital that started me off on the right foot, and then when I went home, I had a lactation nurse from an independent company come to my house that is covered by my insurance to assess Quinn and assess his latch, and of course, we found out he had a tongue tie, so we were able to fix that with her recommendations, and just different positioning and strategies on how to put baby to you. It's just a lot to learn and I could not have done it without my lactation nurse. So highly recommend
recommend that you have a lactation nurse or like you know who you're gonna go to after you have your baby to get that lactation support because it's really, really important, especially if it's your first time. And then I'm gonna end on this note. I'm finding this out right now because Quinn is almost five months and I've been worried this whole time that I'm not gonna be able to meet his demands because he's growing so much, he's getting big. Like how am I gonna produce enough milk for him? And I've been noticing my breast milk changing. So it's becoming more fattier, it's becoming thicker, and I think it's becoming higher calorie to meet his needs. And it's really amazing to watch. Our bodies are so amazing. Like my body knows that this baby is growing and so it's changing the milk and actually his poops are beginning to smell different and smell more because I think my milk is changing. So just trust in the process, trust your body, trust your baby because this process is a beautiful one and just let it unfold one feeding at a time, one day at a time. And I've had to really let go of my control freak brain and just sit back and be like, okay, Brittany, just do the best you can and let nature take its course. And it's been really amazing to watch. So just keep that in mind. If you think your milk supply is down, if you're doubting that you're gonna be able to provide enough for your baby, just keep going, do everything you can to keep your milk supply up, eating well, hydrating, sleeping if you can, and just kind of let nature take over because it's a very amazing process. As expected, this video is quite long. So if you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching. I hope that these tips helped you out. I'm sure I have a few more, but those are the main ones that have helped me out tremendously. And I wish I knew before starting my breastfeeding journey. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, if you found it helpful, because it does really help support my channel. Those of you going through IVF, my heart is with you. Hang in there. I pray every day you guys get your miracle baby too. Those of you about to start your breastfeeding journey, those of you in your breastfeeding journey, I hope this video gives you some encouragement and you pick up some gems that I've picked up that really makes your life a lot easier. And I'm so happy because I was able to make it through the video and Quinn is still asleep. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy because he's napping for longer periods of time. And I was told that it gets easier with the whole nap thing and it is. So those of you who have newborns, it does get easier. On that note, it's been a couple hours. So I'm gonna go wake him up. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. And as always, always remember to be kind to yourself.